Shabbat Shalom. This is Larry Mitchell with Friends of Israel. We are continuing our verse-by-verse -verse study through the Apocalypse of Jesus Christ, or the Book of the Revelation. Today we're going to look at the introduction to the 144,000 Jewish evangelists. Revelation 7, 1 to 4. After these things I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And they heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. How should we interpret this verse? Well, the golden rule of Bible prophecy is, when plain sense makes common sense, seek no other sense, lest the results in nonsense. We are to take a literal view of what is written in the scriptures. After these things, after what things? After the Lord opened the first six seals on the scroll which Jesus received from the Father. I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth. Assuming Jerusalem is the center of the earth, at least in God's eyes, we can assume the angels would be far, far away, to the north, to the south, to the east, and to the west. This would mean two angels were holding back the winds from the north and south poles, while the other two would be holding back the winds to the east and west of Jerusalem, perhaps from the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean, where so many damaging winds originate. That the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or any tree. The angels holding back God's winds of wrath, which will wreak havoc on the land, sea, and vegetation through hurricanes, gales, typhoons, flooding, and droughts. Psalm 103.20 speaks of the power of angels. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Henry Morris, a much wiser theologian than myself, says, the angels are seen as controlling the four winds. Thus, one probably is at each pole, the other two at opposite ends of the same diameter of the equator, restraining the winds which control the great atmospheric circulation. These winds are normally driven by the sun's heat and earth's rotation, so to keep them from blowing at all would require tremendous power. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. The angel ascending from the east seems to be an angel of some, author of the, some authority having the power to restrain the releasing of the four winds, and his authority is confirmed by the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea. The Greek word for loud is mega, and the Greek word for voice is phone. Tongue in cheek, it would appear the angel is using a megaphone to speak to the other angels. Saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Dr. J. Vern McGee says this, another angel means this is the fifth angel. He is apparently a higher rank than the other four because he gives them orders. As we see in the book of the Daniel and also in the epistle 
to the Ephesians, there is graduations of orders of angels, both good and bad. Satan has demon, world well organized. He probably has generals, lieutenants, colonels, majors, lieutenants, sergeants, and then a great many privates. On the other side, God also has his angels arranged. This angel gives order to the other four. Who are the servants of God? Verse 4 reveals that there are 144,000 of them. He identifies them as coming from the tribes of Israel. I've had the opportunity to debate members of a certain cult that argues the 144,000 are not Jews, but are members of their religious organization. Before debating them, I'd like to ask them about the golden rule of Bible interpretation. I say, do you agree that when plain sense makes common sense, we should seek no other sense lest the results in nonsense? I find most of them will, will affirm that. And so I want them to say that we take the Bible literally before we look at Revelation chapter 7. Next week, we will continue our, out, our study on the 144,000, showing that 144,000 cannot pertain to their religious organization, but can only apply to the children of Israel. Shabbat Shalom. This is Larry Mitchell, Friends of Israel.